Hello Thorin and Richard Lewis and Chanman and anybody else that might be watching, hopefully many people. Uh, my name is Cyan and I'm just a casual StarCraft 2 fan. Uh, maybe not casual, I'm, I'm pretty I'm a pretty big fan. Um, but I saw the WCS filtered, unfiltered segment yesterday and I didn't like how some of the things that were being said were just not really responded to. I think that a lot of the things that were said were just not very correct and could be disputed. Uh, so I would like to take this opportunity as somebody that doesn't have a fan base and doesn't have a following and doesn't really have a like a monetary vested interest in making StarCraft 2 into anything at all. Uh, I would like to take this chance and maybe give you a rebuttal on some of the things that you were saying, uh, Thorn and Richard Lewis, and hopefully maybe you can give me a rebuttal to my rebuttal, um, buttle my re or whatever. So I'm just going to go through the unfiltered segment and uh, I'm just going to respond to some of the things that you had to say and hopefully hopefully spark some, some better discussion than just a one-sided conversation either way. Because for the Korean scene now, it's there's like the potential for there to only be something. It's like a four tournaments in the year and there might be like one or two more added and the right. way they're spaced out, true. If you get into the tournaments, you get a lot more money for the last places. Mm -hmm. But if you don't get into those tournaments, you could be sat around. If you bear in mind they run parallel, if you don't get into both leagues, you could just be sat there for six months with nothing to enter, and you literally can't go potentially to a dream hack, to an IEM, to whatever other tournament it was. You don't have a choice. You just have to sit there and essentially be. It's like unless you have some really good salary from your team, yeah. you're just going to be homeless essentially. Not entirely clear on the argument that's being made here. I don't think, if you don't make GSL or SSL, or if you don't make any of the leagues in Korea, I don't really think that having access to DreamHacks and IEMs is going to supplement your income. I think that's placing a lot of uh, a lot of bets on one horse, or whatever the phrase is there, I don't know. If, if you don't make it to GSL, SSL, are you really going to win a DreamHack and then sit on that money for those six months until the next GSL, that doesn't that doesn't sound right. If you're not good enough to win it to to qualify for GSL, and then you go to a DreamHack where there are all of these other Koreans participating in GSL and SSL and Pro League, like that's not you're still gonna be in the same spot if you can't come to DreamHacks anyways. Like you're not gonna win that DreamHack. I don't I don't think I understand that argument. Actually, in okay, but here's the problem with that. Mm -hmm. So. I haven't seen a single person, no matter, like Apollo, a fantastic expert about StarCraft 2. Yeah. What did he explain was wrong with the tweet? So this is where the guys are talking about the initial tweet by like C ESPN Esports, um, where the, the article headline was something along the lines of um, Flash is retired, the shrinking talent pool of Korean StarCraft means that there might never be a replacement. And Thorne complains that when he tweeted about that um, and, and the tweets that he saw about that tweet from StarCraft community members, nobody really responded in a way that described what was wrong with that. So to me, in my opinion, the problem with that whole story and whole article, and the headline especially, is that that implies that there isn't already another Flash or another Jadong that has come up through StarCraft 2. Life, Maru, SOS, uh, Zest, um, just just off the top of the head, those are like the big names that I can think of to me in Korean StarCraft II esports right now. And I can appreciate the idea that there are, are less new players coming in at a very high level, but the idea that there is no StarCraft II Flash level player right now is just wrong. I mean, you know, hell, like MMA, even though I just left to go to the military, unfortunately, but MMA, Bomber, Hyun, there are so many names that for the past three, four years, they've gone really deep in basically every tournament they've attended. They've shown amazing games and they have a really solid fan base. And I just think that the concept of Flash being gone and nothing replacing sort of pillar of esports celebrity in StarCraft 2 in Korea. I think that's just incorrect. I don't like that. That's my problem with the tweet. 
this it, is this it's... is like the West is doubling down on the fucking lie, and it's pretty much always been a lie that like South Korea is this fucking mecca of esports. Who is? And and this is what I mean, you know, like the way it's always been fucking framed in the West is that like they're living some fucking decadent rock and roll fucking lifestyle. I don't, I don't think that there are very many people paying attention in this day and age that actually believe that StarCraft or LOL or esports in general is like this enormous fucking thing in South Korea and they all get to be on television and the sides of billboards and I mean I can link an article I will link an article in the description below where I think it was Elki went to Korea to train in a brood war team house in fucking 2004 and the article is about how esports in Korea isn't actually what people thought it was um, and and there are many many articles through the years through the past like 10 12 years talking about how starcraft and and esports in korea isn't actually as big as maybe some people might think it is and i think the only people that really believe that it's uh you know on any kind of level of fame and notoriety in korea are the casual fans the people that just kind of tune in for um like the big events and I don't even think it's the StarCraft fans at all to be honest with you I think the the most people most of the people that I run into who have this opinion where Korea is the mecca of esports and they're all rock stars they're actually League of Legends fans um, because League is you know really enormous in Korea and I can see where they might get that and especially if they're more casual esports fans in general but I don't think that there's any belief in the StarCraft 2 scene especially not anybody paying attention. I don't think there's really any belief that esports is like their football or something. I think that's bull. So what they always say to him is, do you know Guillaume Petrie? Now, Guillaume Petrie was a pro gamer in fucking 2000. They're not saying even, do you know Flash? Flash is a superstar. Right. They're not even saying that. I don't really want to try and debate this point. Um, I It's just true, um, but little fun fact kind of thing because uh, I like esports history, and as an esports historian, I would hope that Thorne would know about this too. But the reason why people in South Korea, like the, just the general not esports fan people, might know Gion Patrice or Boxer or Yellow, the reason why these names are still relevant at all is because you used to be able to watch esports and Brood War on cable television. In South Korea and I've actually done a video about the rise of Starcraft in Korea and if you want to find that and check that out it's, it's actually pretty interesting it follows the history of South Korea in general and what factors combined to make Korea like an esports country at all and why Starcraft came to be but if you want to watch that video that's on my channel so just check that out Mark well, to be show. fair, if you'd had Jenna Bain on, she would just tell you about how everything the Koreans do isn't as good and how they should just, like, spend $20,000 a day on <laughs> but, all their players and give them foot rubs. So but, I guess it would have been a different no, tone there, Chama. But... So here's where I really draw a line. If you're going to enter this discussion and then claim that a person who owned and managed a Korean StarCraft team doesn't know what they're talking about, but you do... I, I just, I don't even know what to say to that. I don't even know what to say to that. And Nathanius literally said, I thought I almost cried laughing at this. Firstly, because, I mean, he's barely relevant anyway, but. What are you smoking, man? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be derogatory or anything, but how the hell do you think that these really big names in the scene aren't relevant or their opinions aren't informed or i mean maybe they have differing opinions than you do but that doesn't make them wrong that doesn't make them inherently wrong it just makes them different opinions you can't walk into a discussion that is heated within the scene that you don't have any involvement in and then say oh yeah these people that disagree with me these people that might have differing opinions they're not even relevant or they're delusional or they're just wrong as far as this discussion is concerned, and as far as the StarCraft 2 scene is concerned, and this is just honesty, I'm not trying to, you know, like belittle what you have to say, but all things considered, Thorin, you're not actually relevant to the StarCraft 2 scene. You don't do anything 
other than poke the beast sometimes. You don't produce any StarCraft content, you don't work any StarCraft events, you don't put any money into the StarCraft 2 scene. Nathanius? Nathanius works the events. Nathanius is one of the most popular personalities in the game. Nathanius has been involved since like 2013, I think. He's on his like third year. Nathanius started from the bottom up to be involved in StarCraft 2. Nathanius puts in so much work and effort to making StarCraft 2 something that is good, enjoyable, fun, and sustainable. And you kind of just tune into the big articles and the big headlines. So, not only would I say Nathanius knows a lot better what he's talking about than you do, but his opinion is also probably a lot more relevant than yours is, but... And, and what does that sorry, mean? Can the, you just explain that? I mean, just again? in Korea. Just in the, Korea, line, the line where you said, like, that they're su it's supposed to help foster so that they can earn money and go to other events or something. How did, how did WCS earn them more money? The old WCS format earned the Koreans more money because Korean players who didn't feel confident competing in Korea could, if, if they had a good enough team, that is, um, to preface that statement, but if they, they had a good enough team that was willing to sponsor them um, across the oceans, and they didn't feel confident in their ability to play and compete and earn money in the Korean region, well, they could just go to North America, or they could just go to Europe. And it created situations where big-name players, who were maybe a little arguably washed up, they were living in Europe, or they were living in North America, or they were living in Korea and just playing in North America or Europe. Um, there was a team house in Europe with, uh, who was it? It was... Hyun, MC, MVP, Golden, I think, uh, and oh man, I think there were more Koreans in that team house. But anyways, it was it was just a house where people from Korea were living and playing because they didn't want to compete in Korea because they weren't strong enough to win money in Korea. That was that was the safer bet for them, and like that's not really their fault or anything. Like I don't want to say that like I'm putting blame on them. That's the system. And the argument that WCS of old didn't help any Koreans make money is just wrong. Because, you know what? Nesty, Nesty wouldn't have made it in GSL 2014, but he played in North America in WCS. I think so. I'm, I'm so bad. confused by the phrasing, though. What do you mean yeah. favorable? As in a competition that was supposed to find the best StarCraft player allowed people yeah. who were really good at StarCraft to play in it, and that's no, like a not, favor some... or something. It would be anathema to the concept of the best tournament to ban people and say, you can't play this tournament. Why? Well, you're too good, aren't you? What, so I can't play? Well, you're too good, and you come well, from it's... one specific country. This was always my big problem with people who were against the region locking of old WCS. You weren't getting the best StarCraft the best StarCraft wasn't happening in WCS NA and WCS EU. Like, just because there were Koreans there didn't make it better Star. Well, I mean, it was better StarCraft, but it didn't make it the best StarCraft. Just because those Koreans qualified on the backs of their WCS NA and EU points didn't make it the best players in the world playing at BlizzCon. Those Koreans were playing those regions because it was easier money and an easier run than actually playing Korea. The best tournament in the world has always been GSL Codes. Any argument against region locking that includes, well, I want to watch the best StarCraft, is just totally incoherent to the discussion, because the Korean players who were playing in North America and in Europe were not the best players in the world. Those players were in Korea. Those players were the ones that won BlizzCon. Life didn't compete at WCSNA. SOS was not in Europe. They were in Korea. Right. And that's the problem. Here's the thing, Chris. WCS, I never had a problem with. You know why? Because they really did call it WCS America. So I don't care if it only has Americans in do that. But that doesn't exist, Chris. They took that away yeah. and they made all the tournaments that were for everyone into WCS West, basically. I agree wholeheartedly when they first announced wcs like the changes to wcs this year i was really disappointed i thought it was a really bad move i don't understand why they didn't just region i didn't understand why they didn't just region lock the regular wcs like that would just be better i don't but big but i think hopefully with the announcement of activism buying mlg i hope that might mean 
that region locked WCS is in the future, and it's just it took some time to get there because obviously that deal was in the works when they announced the changes to WCS. And my big thing with the changes too is like, why didn't Blizzard just make their own studio? Why didn't Blizzard just make an NA and EU studio like W like LCS? Excuse me. They have StarCraft, Hearthstone, Heroes of the Storm. Overwatch, WoW Arenas. They have huge reasons to build a studio or to fund a studio or something, you know, and just region lock it from there. And my hope now heading forward is that they do do that. And I would I wouldn't mind if we got back our old dream hacks and IEMs where you know, we got to see foreigners going head to head with the Koreans because those were fun tournaments. But failing that um, this is second best, but I do agree it would have been better if they had a just region locked WCS America and WCS EU. That would have been much better, in my opinion, as well. Oh. I, I find it interesting as well that the people that are like pushing back on this, like, you know, just the reality about how bad, like, even mid tier uh, and even, you know, second tier uh, Koreans actually do have it. You know, they've all got a vested interest in this. You got a BC tweeting uh, about, you know, this Stephen Chu article. Well, isn't he like a tournament director of fucking DreamHack? Oh, aren't DreamHack part of this fucking, uh, you know, con uh, concerted effort to keep Koreans out? Didn't they sort of acquiesce and go along with what Blizzard want to do because they want to, you know, do what's best for their business? How can anyone take that seriously? How can anyone look at that and say, well, that's an objective statement? Because here's the thing. First question, how do you make StarCraft grow? I'll tell you what my answer is, mate. I don't know. So you wanted to stay exactly the same as it was? You wanted to stay in the state where it just wasn't growing at all? Just... <sighs> Why is the only person who knew this Blizzard? Why did all these people with experience of running tournaments, DreamHack, IEM, everyone, MLG, why did none of them understand this? Why didn't one of them say, wait a minute, I've noticed in my demographics here that in the tournament, when in the round of 16, two foreigners play each other, they get a spike in viewership because everyone loves to watch people they can cheer for and other such sophistry they retro, which has never been... Other companies do do this, though. Um, League of Legends, a scene that you're actually closely involved with, Thorin, has rules region locking the LCS. Um, there are rules put in place to limit teams moving from region to region. There are rules put in place to limit the number of uh, foreign players. Dota has never really had this issue. Uh, Dota has always been American and European dominated. Counter-Strike Global Offensive has always been very European. Um, Hearthstone has always been very foreigner based. So A, other companies do. B, other games didn't need it. It's a lie that even just having Westerners will make the numbers higher. Why hasn't it been? Why is the only person to suggest this now Blizzard? Why has no tournament done this? League of Legends, the biggest esport in the world. When they were rich, by the way, when Hawk used to make way more money than all the people making round of four in GSL, he would say he wouldn't have any sympathy because he'd just go, "Well, those people don't even know how to m promote themselves. They don't know how to market themselves." They don't Guess what, motherfucker? Are some of those guys making more money than you? It is unfair and disingenuous to compare StarCraft in 2014-2016 to StarCraft in 2011-2012. In StarCraft 2011-2012, Huck is right. You basically just had to be poor at marketing yourself to not make money at that point in time um, if you were a pro player. It wasn't a fact, it wasn't a case of StarCraft being the biggest fish in the pond, it was the only fish in the pond. There was no real competition from anybody else. Twitch was made so that people could watch StarCraft. It was just the only thing. It was the only big eSport at the time. Um, saying that Huck is wrong because of a statement that he made years ago that is now completely irrelevant is just, that's not, this doesn't make any sense. And the fact that you go on to then bully Huck based on his height? I think that really shows something. I don't know what it shows, but it's not good. Literally, you can't play them unless you go there. You know, let's go and travel it's, there. It's to do, by the way, even when given the option. They go there for one month, get their heads caved, and go, see, I'm off back to the West to play easy tournaments. That is incorrect. State has been in Korea for 
I think a number of years now, states been in Korea. Um, Idra, Huck, Jinro, Naniwa, they were all competing in GSL even for a large period of time. Scarlet has been to Korea for a large period of time and is now going back, I believe. Um, and even players who aren't as good have been to Korea and have stayed a long time. I mean, Desro spent a number of months in Korea. And to say that, I, I mean, I feel like the implication behind the words here is that foreigners who do go don't stay long enough. But what are they supposed to do? Like, buy a house, settle in, and, you know, start living their life for the next five years? I mean, shit. They're not making any money. Your, your big complaint initially is that now that there's no dream hacks or IEMs for people to go to, there's no way that anybody can make money off of StarCraft. Well, fuck, what were foreigners supposed to do? They weren't even making GSL money, really. I mean, some deep runs now and then, but what were foreigners supposed to do? I don't, I don't understand this argument. People do go to Korea when they can afford it, when they have the drive, and when they're... Harstam, Harstam spent months in Korea. I, I just, I don't understand this argument. I don't think that it's... I don't think that it's correct. Do you and, follow the NBA at all? So going on from here, Thorne creates an analogy comparing region locking in StarCraft 2 to the race of the race like skin color race distribution of players in the NBA. But that's not a relevant comparison because that would assume that race equals nationality. They're not the same thing. They're just they're just not the same thing. It's just not the same thing. You know, gets inspired by doing that. Like wants to, you know, start competing because they see somebody that that maybe their fellow countrymen or or you know, even just a fellow region, you know, just somebody that you you associate with regionally and, and they get motivated by it. I mean that they? have there been studies done on this? Oh man. I really like life because he's a Zerg player and I play Zerg. That makes sense. That, that, yeah, that's reasonable, but yeah, I like that. That's Yeah, that makes sense. Oh man, I really like Huck because he's Canadian and I'm Canadian. No, nope, that doesn't exist. No, nope, no studies. No, nope, it doesn't exist. Doesn't make any sense. Don't like that. Nope. To be fair, there have been no studies that I can find, or I, I mean, I haven't really looked, but I don't know of any studies that say nationality helps motivate people in professional competitive environments. Like, I don't know, but like, fuck, that makes sense, you know? Do you know who's more likely to turn tune into the final championship between Russia and the United States? Russians and Americans. You know who's less likely? Everybody else. I, it just makes sense to me. So basically, the logic of Hawk is, because SOS is wicked at force fields, he also knows how to grow StarCraft. Yeah, great. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that insight. Thorin is once again trying to invalidate the opinions that he doesn't agree with. I, I don't really know what he has to be gaining from this line of thinking. SOS's opinion is absolutely relevant whether or not he can place force fields down. Dude's won two BlizzCons. He's a fucking staple in the StarCraft II industry, and especially the Korean scene. Of course what he has to say is relevant. Fuck. So, yeah. It was, it was, it was a pretty fucking dumb article. Like, here's what my tweet was, if you remember originally, Chris. It was along the lines of, like, WCS's problem isn't nationality. It's that people who call themselves StarCraft II fans don't like to watch high-level StarCraft II. That was my tweet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you agree, right? The biggest problem is not enough viewers. No. I mean, I don't agree with that tweet. I mean, no, I just asked, do you agree that the biggest problem is not enough viewers? No, you didn't just ask that. You just asked if you agreed with the tweet. And the tweet was really inflammatory. It didn't make any sense. The tweet was, people claim to be StarCraft II fans and don't like watching Koreans. That was essentially what your tweet was. Which is wrong. That's fucking wrong. There's no other way to say it. It's just fucking wrong. I'm sorry. It's just fucking wrong. Mmm, it's just wrong. But, I do agree. The problem with StarCraft II is that there are not enough viewers. That is completely and entirely correct. Absolutely. But you're th th no. The biggest problem is like the end result is not enough viewers. But I think there's not enough players either. Like, I mean, okay. there's, there's multiple issues. But the problem with that is, it, 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 you that when you take that premise, which we all do, 
it then presumes that people know how to get more viewers. And I, as I've tried to point out with all my points so far, I've yet to find a single argument anyone made that will definitely increase viewership. So even on the selfish dollar-based number of heads watching, I haven't even seen any compelling arguments there. So that's why once I've finished with that, then I just go to the argument of, and it's pretty fucked up that you're banning the best players from playing the tournament, right? Which is my position. Once again, I mean, you're, you're claiming to not know what to do to increase viewership and then shit talking on the opinions of other people on how they think that they can increase viewership that doesn't make any sense i mean like okay yeah you're absolutely entitled to your opinion and nobody should just shit on you based on your opinion like no that's not correct but the concept of saying oh you don't know for sure 100% that this is going to double our viewership and StarCraft 2 is big eSport once again, so you just shouldn't do it. No, that doesn't make any sense at all. The fact that this is something being tried that people have been calling for for years and years, like ever since I can remember, I think that makes it worth trying at some level. I mean, fuck, I just... Why, why is it that you claim nobody knows what will do it for sure so they just shouldn't do anything why should the starcraft 2 scene not try new things why should it just stay exactly the same with an ever decreasing fan base and less and less money and less tournaments and less players why would it stay the same if you don't have the answers cool i don't have the answers either but why would it stay the same why wouldn't it try something different i don't understand the example i gave was when the Schengen Agreement thing began in Europe, and a lot of Polish people came to the UK... TLDR, the segment, Thorin makes a kind of analogy or a, I, I, some historical reference, um, basically talking about immigrants or illegal immigrants possibly uh, coming into an environment and taking jobs that nobody really wanted to do in the first place, and then the people who didn't want to do those jobs complaining that foreigners took their jobs. That's that's the analogy that's set up. And the reason why I, I gave this analogy for StarCraft is because to me, it's the same thing. The reason why people lash out at Koreans is because StarCraft is in a position of scarcity where there aren't enough tournaments, there isn't enough money, there aren't enough viewers. Sure. So all they do is lash out at the thing that's not closest to them, which is the Korean person. And the fact that he's winning the tournament, oh, he should just play his own tournaments in Korea, we should have my player as a player here. First off, this is not a relevant comparison. The comparison being given... Um, the, the reason, the argument for uh, why it's okay for the foreign workers to be taking jobs that nobody wants, um, besides the fact that nobody wants the jobs, is that those people are taking the money and putting it into the economy of the place that they're working. That doesn't pertain to StarCraft or any eSport because the issue is not that Koreans are taking the money out of their Swedish tournament and not spending it in Sweden. Nobody gives, a, nobody gives a flying fuck about that. The issue would not be Huck wins a tournament in Germany and then comes back to North America. Like, that's not the issue. The issue is not where the money is going. The issue is the money within the StarCraft infrastructure. So the Koreans are coming from Korea to Europe, North America. They're competing in Europe and North American tournaments against Europe and North European and North American teams in front of a European and North American viewing audience and they're winning. They're getting the, the viewer hours, they're getting the money from the tournament, and they're, they're more importantly than anything, I would argue, they're taking eyes and opportunities for eyes away from foreign teams. Because unfortunately, Korean teams don't market to North American and European audiences. Korean teams generally try and find sponsors in Korea, which just makes sense as do North American teams. North American teams find sponsors in North America. European teams find sponsors in Europe. And the issue is that if a team can't put their player in front of as many eyes as possible so that all the eyes can see the little logos all over their jerseys and so that they can rep the gear that they're using so that they can tweet on social media like, oh yeah, our players made a really deep run in, in DreamHack. Come check it out. Thanks to Logitech for the mouse and thanks to thanks to Astro for the headset. Well, I mean there's less money to be made then. There's less marketing opportunities for these North American companies, for these European companies, there's less marketing opportunities for the teams themselves. 
and that takes money away from the scene. The more Korean team members there are in any given foreign tournament, the less opportunities and the less appealing StarCraft II becomes for foreign investors, foreign sponsorships, foreign teams. Um, and it's, it's become a case of not even foreign sponsors. It's actually a case of foreign teams. I mean, some of the biggest esports organizations in the world don't have StarCraft II rosters right now. Fnatic, Dignitas, TSM, CLG, uh, Cloud9. Yeah, fuck. I mean, there, there are all these really big organizations that have squads for games that are smaller, uh, like Halo and... Um, Frig, I mean, some of them have two Counter-Strike teams. Like, there are lots of examples where they could have a StarCraft player, but they just don't, because it's not as profitable for their brand, because players from North America and Europe won't make as deep runs in a not-region-locked environment. And there are definitely Koreans who can compete on foreign teams and who are in this environment right now, like Hydra and Violet and Holt, and they're cool, like, they're, they're good. But you need to have a player visa for that, which is another big investment for the team. You need to put these players up in a team house or an apartment or something because they can't live at home because they're from they're from Korea. So it's really very much a case of the more Korean talent there is at any given foreign tournament, like a dream hack, the less appealing StarCraft becomes for foreign teams and foreign investors because there will just be fewer people watching them and fewer advertisement opportunities for those people. So that's that's the ball game. That's um, that's the end of the discussion on Unfiltered with Chan Man, Richard Lewis, and Thorin on WCS, the new WCS, and uh, the debate surrounding the new WCS. I would like to to wrap up by saying I don't think that Thorne and Richard Lewis and the people who share this opinion um, that these tournaments shouldn't be region locked. I don't think that they're a minority. Um, just because a large number of StarCraft talent is saying that this is the right thing to do does not mean that they're the majority of voices. Um, this is something that's been talked about for years. I'm not even sure if it's the right play currently in the current StarCraft 2 universe. I think that it will be good for the long run and bad for the immediate future because there will be retiring players in Korea. Um, there, there might even be a decrease in overall viewership because people will go, "Wow, fuck that!" You know, I've been watching Koreans in the the higher level of play for so many years. I don't want to watch this. Um, and the people who were really, really committed to the idea of region locking and everything like that, they might have moved on. That's entirely possible. In 2013, when WCS was announced and it wasn't region locked, everybody just said, you know what, fuck that. I'm just going to watch League. I'm going to watch Dota. CS goes on the rise. I'm just going to watch that. Um, it's entirely possible. But I do personally believe that this is something for the best overall for StarCraft II. Um, and the reason why it's important to grow StarCraft II, the reason why it's important to just not settle and say, this is fine. The scene that we have is fine, is because... Esports is blowing up now. Esports is growing. Esports is the next big thing, and everybody knows that. I think everybody in the scene is like really excited about where esports is at right now. But I don't think anybody's excited about where StarCraft is right now. Not really. Um, I want StarCraft to be on ESPN. I want to turn my television on and watch StarCraft. I want my friends to know about StarCraft. I want to have real conversations with people who play this video game, who watch the pro scene, you know, in, in real life, like people that I just meet. Um, and that's not going to happen if the scene continues on the way that it has. Um, there are statistics about how it's not actually being in decline that much. BlizzCon for the past number of years has got a little bit increasing viewership and everything else has just stayed roughly the same. But looking at how much esports has grown in the past five years and looking at how much StarCraft II has stayed the same, it's basically like a decline. Um, we have the same piece, the same sized piece of an enormous pie, and I don't want that. I think this is the best game in the world. I think this is the most beautiful game in the world. I think we have some of the most amazing talent in video gaming in the StarCraft scene, um, and I don't think that's even something that people can dispute, man. Korean, foreign, no matter which one you root for, no matter who you're rooting for, it's not even teams. I think StarCraft is a beautiful game, and I take offense to 
being called not a true fan because I like foreign players. I take offense to the concept that the scene has gotten its just desserts now because it's declined and because people are promoting foreign players and foreign tournaments. Um, and I take offense to bullies from other scenes who have long since stopped paying attention to StarCraft beyond big headlines coming in and saying that we're doing it wrong and that the opinions of professionals in our scene don't matter and that they know better. Uh, I don't like that. And I think that within the discussion that happened on Unfiltered, there was a lot of bullying and there was a lot of name calling. Not name calling. Well, yeah, name calling, yeah. And uh, just picking on people like Huck. It wasn't fair. Um, if for any, if by any chance, Thorne, Richard Lewis, Chairman, if anybody sees this video, uh, I, I, I'd do a Skype call. I'd like to have a chat. Um, I'm just some guy. Nobody likes me. So thank you for watching. I hope that it was enjoyable. I hope that it was entertaining. Bye. <laughs> oh, man. This is really oh, that was a good one. I like that.